<laughs> SexyHackers.com Once upon a time, there were a few young girls with a passion for literature, a love of the written word, an inspired infatuation of... Okay, fine. We were a bunch of super dorks with no friends. We spent all day hiding out in our rooms, reading books that were maybe a little inappropriate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Who Let Me Read This, the sometimes problematic po- podcast where we review the troublesome books of our past um, or young adult lives uh, and wonder why the heck we read them and why did we make Laura read them for this podcast? Why in retribution? <laughs> oh, sorry about Blubber. I get it. We all suffer together. That's all right, though. Uh, speaking of suffering together, say hello to our wonderful panel today, Miss Andrea Radel Schrader, Miss Michelle White. Hello. And Miss Sarah Wallish. Hey. And I'm Laura Holterman. We're here at the Sexy Hacker Studio, uh, diving into Twilight's New Moon, the second book in the series. And if you have not uh, been listening to the last two weeks, um, go back. Listen, yeah, just go back and listen to us. It's fine. We'll still be here. If you want to hear us yell a whole bunch. We'll be Great. waiting for you. It's All like we're word. patient. <laughs> yeah. We're patient. Yes. Gross. We'll wait for you while you sleep. Like Edward. <sighs> <laughs> we'll wait but- for you while your resolution wears down. Like Jacob. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All the men in these books are problematic. Except for, the- for Charlie. But also he's problematic. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> For those of you who don't have that kind of time, uh, <laughs> let's run through just a quick recap of where we're at in the book. Sure. Vampires and werewolves are real. Show enough. But also, <laughs> Bella, a klutzy human, and Edward, a sparkly vampire, are so in love. So in that love. is, until she gets a paper cut and his brother tries to eat her. Sure. His family, the Cullens, move Happens away, and Edward tells Bella that it's because he doesn't really love her and that he'll make it like she never existed, or like he never existed. That Whatever. solves everything. Sure. So she lays down in the woods to die, like you do, and is rescued by a soups toad strong, shirtless quailute named Sam Uly. Then she spends months in a catatonic state until her dad, Charlie, who is a delf, is real worried. She eventually figures out that dangerous situations make her hallucinate Edward's voice. So she starts Fun. hanging out with Jacob Black, her dad's friend's son, who helps her chase that adrenaline high. And she starts to actually like hanging out with him, which is nice. Good. Healthy. But then Jacob ditches her, and she finds out that it's because he's a werewolf what? and part of a pack of Quelute va- uh, werewolves who arise in their tribe whenever there is a vampire threat. And that current vampire threat is Victoria, the girl vampire from book one, who is back and she is after Bella. And she's got great hair. She does have great hair. Yes, she's a redhead. She's the only redhead in the book. And I feel like Stephanie Meyer has an opinion about redheads and I don't love it, but also I love it. (laughs) Fair. (laughs) So when we picked up um, Jacob and his werewolf pack, are trying to protect Bella and Charlie by association. Um, I love Charlie. I, I, I love Charlie. It's I fine. Listen, if the worst... I feel the way about Charlie the way that Michelle feels about the dad in my sweet Adrena. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, let's be real. The worst that Charlie does is he's a little incognizant of his daughter's mental health situation, which sounds about right for real life. And, and he the, lets her do all the housework, which yeah, I don't Yeah, and he love. can't cook. Which isn't great, but by the Figure values of all of the men in these books, still number one. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, he's a regular mm-hmm. prince. Um, so Jacob and the pack are, are protecting them. Uh, Charlie is also out looking for this pack of huge animals, these like super bears that have been seen in the woods and mm-hmm. that everyone seems to think are eating the hikers. Yes, that my are- favorite sci-fi movie. Yeah. Super bears. <laughs> Super bears. <laughs> oh, we'll have a script ready in a few weeks. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, it only took her three months to write the first Twilight book, so I feel like it's, it shows. Yeah, that's right. I feel like with our with our powers combined, we could get a screenplay done in a couple weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a race right there. <laughs> done. Um, 
Bella is told to like stay indoors and be safe and do all these things, but she doesn't wanna. She's, she's bored. She's bored. So she goes cliff diving. As you do. As a storm is forming. That's so she sees Jacob cliff diving and he promises to take her. Mm-hmm. Yes. And Earlier then in the it's book, too yeah. cold. And then she goes the next day and it's hot. She well, says it's hot. She I'm, said, I mean, I know this a, is on the oh, coast, but we're yeah. in Wisconsin. That's normal. I, <laughs> that's true. That's true. It's like, she's it's a, hot out. We can go swimming. And then you get in Lake Michigan and it's 50 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> I kept thinking but, that. I'm like, man, that's going to be cold. I mean, but I've there's been a storm, swimming so. in Lake Superior. Yeah. It's, yeah. It doesn't matter how hot out it is. It's, it's cold. You get in that water and you like lose your breath where I can't, I don't understand how she wouldn't be absolutely terrified. Like she's in the Pacific Northwest and to that's the that Atlantic water. Ocean or the Pacific Ocean. I think I was cold while I, I was reading it because I was like, yeah. this sounds terrible. Well, like, it did. It sounded <laughs> terrible. She's extra. It's great. You can tell she doesn't pay attention to school because she's thinking about Edward because she's also surprised that there's currents. Yep. Yeah. And well, and maybe I, I feel like I'm very oh, like overly sensitive to like the danger. Yeah. <laughs> because oh, yeah. I'm not a strong swimmer. Yeah. Nobody try and like not great. drown me. But I'm not a strong swimmer. So like the idea, like she's talking about cliff diving, and I'm, but currents. But what if there's rocks? But do you know, like what if you, yeah, what if you I would go never the wrong way and you, uh, you're the gonna, Atlantic. Oh, you so cliff dive in like calm water. And yeah. she also, she now knows that all of the people that she has previously seen jump off a literal cliff Car- into wolves. the ocean are werewolves. They, they all werewolves. have supernatural superpowers, but like. Yeah, she'll be fine. The clumsiest person in the history but, of mankind is going to jump off a cliff. But she's doing it on purpose because she wants to right. see. Well, yeah, Edward. and then as soon as she lands in the water, essentially, she's just like, "Well, I guess I'm dead now." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she says, "I know, you know that." She says, uh, "You know, don't fight the current. Swim parallel with the shore. Actually, you're just supposed to let the." current take you out don't swim at all just yep. save your energy lay dead yeah and let it take you it will take you out if you let so she's wrong on both counts. just drift around <laughs> mm-hmm. um and it, we also get some hints in this that once she's in the water that victoria is also yeah in she the sees water. some fiery mm-hmm. hair Ooh. it's ariel yep <laughs> um and <laughs> She gets saved, of course, um, and Jacob and Bella almost smooch, and she has feelings for Jacob, but not, like, feeling feelings like she had for Edward or whatever. Just embrace it. You're 18. It's fine. Right. Go with yeah. it. Uh, like, you're 18. You don't have to have feeling feelings for everybody you kiss. Just, like, kiss them. Yep. That's yeah. good. You do if you're Mormon. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> and she then, did, um, what's her name? Stephanie Meyer did say that one of her major influences was her Mormon faith. Oh, sounds about writing. Right. Yeah, so, it does, sounds very right. She sure. wasn't specifically writing a Mormon book, but that her Mormon faith was a big Always. influence on her writing. Sure. So Clearly. Um, so then, out of nowhere in this, Alice Cullen shows up. Hi. <laughs> hey, Alice. What are you doing? Hey, girl. Hey. Oh, my God. Uh, turns out Alice's convoluted foresight, you know, where she can sort of see but can't really, uh, can't see werewolves. So yep. she saw Bella jump off the cliff. And but like, she'd be drowning. Right. But she didn't see Jacob save her with her confusing powers. Yeah. Um, and if a werewolf is near you, she can't see you. <laughs> right. It's like a... A bubble around she, the werewolf uh, that she can't see. A website <laughs> described it as she's were sighted. <laughs> did a lot. Awesome. Nice. No contacts for that. Um, and then uh, while she's with Bella, Alice sees that Edward thinks Bella is dead. Oh, no. And she's planning to go to Italy to try and get the Volturi, some really old, fancy vampire royalty, to kill him. Oh, also, Dick moved Jacob. Like, he oh, yeah. Up and is like, where's, who does he ask? Where ja- Charlie. Charlie. Oh, there you go. He's at the funeral. He doesn't, he's at yes. the funeral, trying to make him think someone that else she's dead on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't, he just, that was a dick move. Yeah. yeah. It was very, like, Passive aggressive. Uh, on I didn't Jacob's say part. it was your funeral. I you just said uh, the, I said didn't the say it was funeral. not your funeral. <laughs> I mean, it's not my fault. He implied it was you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And oh finally, gosh. we get the payoff 
for the excruciatingly obvious Romeo and Juliet allegory (laughs) that she has been not even foreshadowing. It's not foreshadowing. Just if it, yeah, it, it's not. It's just. It's just explicitly <laughs> yeah. foretelling, foretelling, <laughs> for screaming. It's the worst, and we finally get it because Bella was almost dead, and he thought she's really dead, and now he wants to be dead. Aww. Which Aww. Stephanie Meyer does, um, like explicitly say, like. Romeo and Juliet was the inspiration for that book. Like each yeah. book has a like mm-hmm. famous literature book that is the inspiration for it. The first book is Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. Second book is Romeo and Juliet, uh, New Moon, Eclipse. The third book is Wuthering Heights, <laughs> which I like didn't really get. Um, and Breaking huh. Dawn, the last book, um, the theme is inspired by Merchant of Venice and Midsummer Night's Dream. Interesting. See, and yeah, yeah. it's. Don't tell us these things, Stephanie right. Meyer, because we know it was inspired by Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> you made it yeah. so very clear. Yep. Like, I wrote the it down. other ones, I'm like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. This yeah. one, I'm like, yeah. don't don't tell me that like I'm an idiot. Yeah. You spent <laughs> about 50 pages of these 500 pages <laughs> talking about Romeo and Juliet and how great everybody thinks it is and how romantic it is and then and you, how Bella thinks that her situation is, Romeo is like <laughs> Romeo and Juliet like, and then you made it explicitly exactly like Romeo and Juliet <laughs> good god well, if I gender I mean, swap it nobody will notice guy. right well, except dare to dream <laughs> we could we could have such a great time if oh my god it's not even gender swapped in my brain, I was like, and she gender swapped it and no. thought no one would notice, but it's not even. Nope. No. It's just straight up. Listen, she gave us Romeo and Juliet and didn't give us Mercutio. Really? How dare she? She <laughs> likes to keep it as boring as possible. Yeah. Right. right. Real yeah. boring. Yeah, she talks about how, like, Jacob is like Paris. And what if <laughs> Juliet had just married Paris? Would she have been happy? And she explicitly says, like, Jacob is... Paris. I'm going to barf. <laughs> like, come on. Also, like, anybody anybody references Paris, and I immediately conjure up Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. <laughs> no. I would have picked Paul and Rudd. Listen, and I'm like, Jacob is no Paris. Paul Rudd. <laughs> no. Jacob wishes he was Paul Rudd. <laughs> Paul Rudd would never with that wig. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, he would, because oh he gosh. did in Twelfth Night. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> He would not be as gross as Jacob is, though. Also true. <laughs> also would, wouldn't would be, like, creepily 16. No. It's true. He would be hilariously 16 because he's obviously not 16. Yes. But is he, though? Paul Rudd could be 16. Could be. We don't he know. He could be. Paul Rudd is ageless. does not age. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right. And anyway. then, um, lastly, in the actual things that happen in the section <laughs> of the book... Um, suddenly, Alice and Bella just run off to Italy to try and stop Edward from getting himself killed. Does she even leave a note for Charlie? She does. It's okay, not good. great, but she does. Because, wow, rude. Just in this, like, this specific spot, I have, like, so many things. <laughs> like, I won't be able to function. Um, we know. If it weren't for me, everything would be, be- better. It's not even bearable to live through this day. I'm like, what? Ooh, stop. Girl promoting. needs yep. yeah. therapy. I can't tell if it's a romance or a horror. Like, neither maybe can we. <laughs> <laughs> no one can. But She's also, talking about the movie. Which the I actually so, have a Robert Pattinson quote for that. <gasps> Ooh, Ooh, Robert Pattinson quote time. I have quite a few Robert Pattinson delightful. quotes about um, the Twilight series. Love but it. one very apropos everyone's just like oh it's such a fairy tale romance and it's just like this seems like a nightmare <laughs> absolutely robert pattinson thank you because he, he hated it yeah he? Hated all it. of them did i'm pretty sure every single person who was in these movies hated it yeah. they don't hate that money doll they no not. right yeah <laughs> but it was clear that they hated it when we watched it and we played the game of huh do you think in the scene the director just told them okay now just pretend someone farted yeah. <laughs> no, go back and watch it it's great it's if you do i actually have a robert pattinson wrap. quote for that too Ooh. <laughs> i'll read it to you because i love it i thought that the way to make it really intense is if you can barely talk to each other or you can barely touch each other and it's incredibly serious all the time which is how the book is written mm-hmm. but everyone wanted it to be that they should just be happy and having fun 
I remember the producers giving me a copy of the book and every single instance where my character smiled, they highlighted everything. So I got a different color highlighter and highlighted all the parts where he frowned and just handed it back. (laughs) Then my agents flew up and said, you have to do the opposite of what you're doing right now or you're going to get fired. (laughs) I literally came back after lunch and was like, hi, I'm a smiling vampire. Look at me. I want to keep my job. (laughs) Oh, Which I love. (laughs) The other fantastic thing that we all noticed when we were watching this movie is that uh, apparently their instructions while going into this was every single person was like, you know how William Shatner never says a whole sentence? Or oh, like, yeah. John Wayne. They've always got that speaking style where they say half the thought and then they stop for a second and then they continue. But Andrea... I'm in the kitchen, Bella. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I just don't know how to tell you, Bella. I just love you so much. This movie could be 45 <laughs> minutes shorter. <laughs> There's so much dead air. It's rough. It is rough. Oh, goodness. But that's how you can tell that they love each other so passionately. Yep. Because they can't speak this. in complete it's sentences. Exactly. Yeah. On that note, we're going to take a quick break um, from our sponsors here at Sexy Hackers Studio. We and have then- to pause because we love them so much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, make sure you love them too. Like and subscribe. Buy a to t-shirt. Us. Do a thing. Yeah, they're good t-shirts. Rate, they're review. Down. Yeah, and yeah. rate and review. We'll be back in just a second. Sexyhackers.com And we're back. <laughs> Let me read this. My goodness, we are chatty Cathy's even during the break. There's it's just- fine. We're just brainstorming some t-shirt ideas. So many. Yes. That's a good thing. If you guys have ideas, we'd love to hear from you. Comment below. Um, So we've already been diving into a few of our our WTF moments, but I don't want to... I don't want to skip over them at all in these sections. Diving into them like Bella dives like into the dive goddamn into ocean. Uh, As Andrea, a person who does not like being out. scared. Oh my gosh. Just, yeah. no. <laughs> all of the things she does in this book make me very uncomfortable. I just don't like being scared. It's yep. a lot. Absolutely. Um, and my my WTF from this, um, there, was, uh, there was one about Alice's powers, which we've kind of discussed, which bother me. But one that came up, um, one of my WTFs that came up when we were comparing uh, this to the movie... Mm. So the speaking of the cliff diving, so the cliff diving in the book is very much her wanting to chase the adrenaline, wanting to see the mm-hmm. auditory hallucination from Edward. Mm-hmm. In the movie, that is very much her committing suicide. Oh, yeah. And I was so furious at the take they took at that. Like, mm-hmm. she just fully clothed, didn't, she wasn't diving. She just stepped into the ocean and mm-hmm. made a choice. And I was like, stop putting these ideas in children's heads. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Oh, yeah. So I have a cliff diving question because, Michelle, you've been cliff diving. What? When you cliff dive, do you dive, like dive head first, or do you jump and go feet first? Most people do not dive head first. You can really hurt your ears and your head. So most people, if it's a high, you're going to do feet first, unless you're, like, really experienced diver. Okay. Yeah, and presumably you want some distance from the oh, cliff yeah. itself. Like it, it should be a well. You can jump right off usually if it's cliff diving safe. It's safe to jump. True. Right off. Yeah. But um, this doesn't also, seem like it's a spot that's yeah. Cliff diving I had safe. a co- well, it wasn't my cousin. It was my friend's cousin who jumped head first as a teenager from a really high one, hands out, and blew his eardrums out. Like oh wow, it's the pressure. Yeah, and mm-hmm. he's had hearing loss forever. Oh my so gosh. don't do that. Nope. Yeah. Be nope. careful. Just clear your helmet. Don't do anything. Cliff mean, dive feet first from an approved cliff diving location. Don't date a man who's 90 years older than you. To <laughs> keep straight, like if you just tilt a little bit, if you're yeah. high enough, you can really hurt yourself. Yikes. That's terrifying. Like I said, <laughs> I don't like being <laughs> scared. The movie so. also made Jacob a lot more aggro than he was in the book. In the book, he's very yeah. passive aggressive about things. And in mm-hmm. the movie, he was aggressive aggressive about <laughs> right. things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Literally like threatens Mike a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in the book, in the book, they acknowledge that he is having a, an he, episode he of has, werewolfery. Yeah, he like yeah. has kind of an he an overreaction, an angry overreaction to Mike doing something innocuous, like having the flu. <laughs> yeah, how oh, dare yeah. he? Yeah. But then he's movie. like, "Wow, I like I'm f- the way that I'm feeling is not okay and is not normal. Something is wrong." Mm-hmm. And in the movie, it was just like. 
Rage! Yeah. <laughs> no explanation, just rage. Yep, just broing out. Just broing yeah, out. Yeah, fully broing out. <laughs> and and then that's it. Oh, um, yeah, the movie is problematic in so many in, in so many ways. Um, mm-hmm. In addition to the book, it like adds extra layers on on top <laughs> of it. And I just I love that the actors all hated doing it. <laughs> yep, it, that yeah. makes me. They were super not about it. Nope, not at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Robert Pattinson shared some some really great quotes, and I actually got to have a. I can't say his name because he is so happy. But one of the actors, um, you know who you are, um, joined me at a campfire um, at a friend's house. Um, I love this story <clears throat> so yeah, it was much. Bizarre. <laughs> Through a bizarre twist of twist and turn of things, he was actually friends with my boyfriend's cousin at the time, and he ended up at a campfire um, that I was at. And uh, you know, my my boyfriend at the time was all like, "Oh, be cool, be cool." He was in Twilight, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, Lord, that's, that's not a big don't deal. worry, yeah, I'm, no, good. I'm good." I'm good. <laughs> Um, that makes it way less. Cool. Yeah. And during this, so we were like talking and hanging out. We busted out the, like this really nice bottle of scotch and we're like drinking. And during this, this actor is just talking smack about Robert Pattinson, like nonstop and what a okay. dick he is and how he's going to sue him and all this other oh, stuff. So yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, Robert Pattinson must be a really bad guy. And I was totally on this guy's side until I saw him take two fingers of some amazing 20 year old scotch and pour it into his bud light. And I was so <laughs> mad. And I was like, what? And he's like, Oh, it's better this way. It's like the chasers right in it. Like, Ew. I have no respect for you. How brother of the color dare family. you? I, exactly. <laughs> um, Oof. so that was, yep. Uh, it was a so it was a very um, aggressive cast towards each other. They did not Seems like, like it, each yeah, other. There they was fought. a lot of tension. Yep. Yeah. Um, but Robert Pattinson had some much more delightful, fun things to say. Yes. Um, I've collected some share. quotes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here is one. When you read the Twilight series, it's like saying Edward Cullen is so beautiful. I creamed myself. <laughs> I mean, every line is like that. He's the most ridiculous person who's so amazing at everything. I think a lot of actors tried to play that aspect. I just couldn't do it. And the more I read the script, the more I hated this guy. So that's <laughs> how I played him, as a manic depressive who hates himself. Plus, he's a 108-year-old virgin, so there's clearly some issues there. <laughs> he, he, Which, like, he does seem like he hates himself. If you himself. don't want to oh, have yeah. sex, like, that's your choice. Oh, like, yeah. But it's not There's nothing choice. wrong with that, no. but also... Yeah. If it's not your choice. It's right. not about not wanting to have sex right. for him. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's about his soul. Um, also, a little short one. I had to do a lot of physical training and stuff, but uh, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, apparently, Robert Pattinson was supposed to bulk up for Edward, and he was like, nah, it's fine. I'm good. <laughs> oh, he really Edward. did almost lose his job. <laughs> But buddy, it I don't think he's that cute, so like it no. doesn't do it for me. No. Yeah. So here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> a unique perspective that I can bring to this. <laughs> I worked at Blockbuster when these movies came out. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited. I to hear the story. was privy to the sheer batshit insanity that the men, and some cases not even men, boys in these movies inspired mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in both teenagers and fully grown adult humans. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, people lost their shit over this. We had a documentary about Robert Panson. That was like an unauthorized documentary. <laughs> that was literally just clips of him from public sources. <laughs> Somebody strung together. Oh, and the released, days before YouTube. Yeah, yeah, released right. on DVD and it was stolen. <laughs> three times <laughs> we got three different copies of this damn thing <laughs> additionally my favorite i think uh this the best summary of the just ravenous <laughs> fandom that these movies inspired a fully grown adult woman came into our blockbuster <laughs> And wanted me to tell her about every movie that Robert Pattinson had ever done, which was really none at that point. I was point. about to say, uh, 
that Twilight and Twilight 2. She was real <laughs> mad that those were the only options. Uh, oh. She wanted more of Robert Pattinson, which, hey, you do you. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not, because she followed that up with, he's just so beautiful. <gasps> I want to rape him. Ah! No, no, ma'am. No. Ma'am. Which... I don't feel like this is a controversial statement at all. It's not okay no. to say about anyone. No. Ever. No. Particularly not to a stranger. <laughs> Anyways. So <sighs> I'm showing her the Robert Pattinson movies we have, which is none. Um, <laughs> and trying to think of people who maybe look like Robert Pattinson. <laughs> <laughs> How kind of you. Yeah. If you can like, I don't know. Here's something like really young Kevin Costner maybe? Yeah, I think I, uh, I think I went like. Baby Ed Norton, like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, sure. um, and she confided in me that she actually really thought uh, that that boy who plays Jacob is real good looking too, but she can't think about him like that because she knows he's not 18. Ah, no, that doesn't change. I hate it so much, you guys. Which I feel like is this, I mean, there is a parallel there with every almost 18 year old woman in every film ever you know yeah. emma watson in harry potter movies where there were like countdown clocks to when she was 18 oh yeah absolutely like, poor jacob lautner or taylor lautner? taylor, lautner. taylor, taylor lautner. yeah sorry just blending them right together who by the way nobody sue me i don't know <laughs> um always a good practice also found on the internet because you know i did the bare minimum of research about this <laughs> book um when the movie came out, the studio question mark mm -hmm. um, like released a bunch of weird stuff about how like well he's actually like part Native American on his great grandma's side, oh. which like may or may not have been true at Sounds all. About right. And it was like like weird dodgy stuff about trying to be like oh but but actually he's but part Native really American so it's okay yeah. that we're oh like. Mm -mm. No, no. Casting no. this random dude in a bad wig. Appro appropriating <laughs> the culture to Right, him. yeah. Like, yeah. It was, yeah. there it's was, like, bad. weird... But, 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 but it's okay. Like, it's not blackface, I swear. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Man. We just made the skin dark. Yeah. 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 It's rough. Oh, so that's uh, fun. Yeah. But also, Graham Greene is in the movie version of New Moon, who is fantastic. Mm-hmm. He has He's a like, very small role. He's the guy who dies in the woods after he sees a vampire. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. just, wop, wop. just little but, delightful roles. Yeah. Um, Wonderful character actor. But going back to, actually, the, the woman who freaked out and the, the inappropriate reaction <laughs> yes. to this uh, leads me to kind of our discussion on um, what age we were when we read these mm -hmm. and, you know, how it really impacted all of us. Um, so who actually, who read these when they first came out on this table? Or I read them when the, the movies were out. Yeah. Okay. I read them when the movies were out because I had a friend that insisted that I just didn't understand because I didn't read the books. Oh. And so I was like, hmm, want to bet. <laughs> and then I, I read like, the books. I feel like she's so these maybe were not first your friend published, anymore. This, the New Moon was first published in 2006. Um, I think I probably read these about 2009. Yeah, that's so while right the movies the were time, out, yeah. um, my roommate at the time Jules um was like you need to read these books and I was like but do I I mean I think I had seen the first movie and I was like do I really though for um, anybody out there but if you're she gave you her copies these books, and I read them <laughs> so I read the first book and I read New Moon and I was so angry <laughs> at New Moon that I didn't read the other two books that I was like <laughs> I'm done. I hate it. No more. You can't and so I never me. read the other if books read but I did watch any all of them. Movies. Read Eclipse. All right. Fair enough. So how old were you guys then in, in um, that time? Math? 24 Ish. maybe? Ish. Okay. I, feel like I was an adult, but my brain wasn't fully formed yet. Yeah. Okay. That was in that same range. Yeah. It was like early that 20s, mid-20s. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like your brain finishes developing when you're like 25-ish. Yeah. Uh, and so like I knew that it wasn't okay, but like my brain was still like, mm, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was a particularly wild journey for me as someone who had my seventh grade English teacher lend me the entire set of the Vampire Chronicles. Nice. And I had to get a signed permission slip from my parents. <laughs> and then I had to explain why one of the blurbs was from Playboy. 
<laughs> but uh, no, it was fine. Fine. it was weird to read that as an actual teenager and then read these as an adult because they're like the inverse <laughs> of each other. <laughs> Uh, it was a journey. It was it was interesting coming from a background of having read a lot of vampire fiction, Vampire Chronicles, and several other series. And mm-hmm. this was a this is a very uh, for all the shit it gets for the sparkly vampires and all that. It is certainly a very unique take on the vampire lore. Mm-hmm. It's not a great one, but it's a take for my personal taste as, as Sarah unique. said uh, but it is certainly it is unique it's interesting it's it's got some different things to say about that mythos that yeah. could have been good been. well in her like Stephanie Meyer has talked about like that her influences in writing this were <clears throat> excuse me were not yeah. vampire it, no. like vampire mm-hmm. lore vampire fiction was not an influence on her writing at all like she, she ran was, the other direction <laughs> she talks a, she's talked a lot about like being influenced by shakespeare and jane austen and i'm like oh mm-hmm. honey oh honey <laughs> she is but at that level like you read romeo and juliet when you're in high school and yeah. the level at which you absorb it which is to say that you think it's really romantic and sweet yeah. and that their true love is well, so I touching assume that part of that is probably like socialization as well because oh, yeah. um she is lds mm-hmm. latter-day saints um she is mormon she went to brigham young university which has a really great theater department by the way um <laughs> Yeah, that's apparently they're known for having a really good theater department. Awesome. Um, went to Brigham Young, like got married really young. Um, I think she was still in college when she got married. Um, and like her idea for this book came to her in a dream. Yeah. It took her just a couple months to write it. She wrote the first book in like three months. And like. It's very, it all, it all adds up very clearly of just. Yeah. This is a, an adult woman uh, maybe funneling some unresolved and Tension. undealt with <laughs> feelings. Yeah. And yeah. Thoughts. In a very abrupt, intense way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting because at the beginning of this book, um, you know, she's she's like, I love you, Anna, be with you forever. This is the life. Like, this is what I want out of my life. I mm-hmm. want you to turn me into a vampire. And she wrote the first book and the idea for the last book at the same time. And the last book is when they actually do, like, get married and have a weird vampire baby. And, like, that trajectory, just those two pieces. Like, she's in high school, she falls in love, and then immediately gets married. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That um, is a very... um specific kind of yeah. religious trajectory yeah. or mm-hmm. trajectory yeah. that is common in Aren't you lucky many you religions. met the love of your life exactly when you were ready to graduate mm-hmm. high school? Right. Wow, they come along. It just happens to be. <laughs> right. And I do feel like the editors kind of pulled back from that where they were like, yeah, you got to put something else in the middle there. Right, there's got to yeah. be some more story. Sure. And then there's going to be lots more story next week as we ah. wrap up Twilight's new moon. Thank God. It's an action packed <laughs> section um, because we got to cram all the plot in the last 50 pages. <laughs> yep. That's, that's what we do. It's the Stephanie Meyer special. <laughs> Actually, a lot of them. On yeah, the a lot of the books that we've true. read. Have, Fair enough. Um, Awesome. Thank you very much to our guests today and to Sexy Hacker Studio for giving us this space um, and some wicked sweet t-shirts to wear while we talk about all this good nonsense. Be sure to like and subscribe and start Mm -hmm. commenting on things. We would love to hear from you guys and we will see you next Wednesday. Bye. 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 SexyHackers.com Stream Team.